Hi, I'm Andy Shaughnessy for Real Time with IPC. Here with me this morning is Pat McGough. How's it going, Pat? Going well, Andy. How are you? Good, good. Long, long time no see since we were so almost neighbors. It's good to see you again. <laughs> yeah. Pat is the Marketing Development Manager for the Valor Division of Mentor Graphics. Correct. And uh, I see you all recently released, uh, you've been working on the Valor MPI, and uh, as part of that is this Lean MPI. Right. And uh, I, it, concurrent DFM is a big part of the Lean, Lean MPI. Why don't you tell us uh, what exactly do you mean by concurrent DFM? Sure, appreciate it, Andy. Well, concurrent DFM means that our customers, while they're in the design process, can identify and address potential manufacturability issues. Mm -hmm. And this goes beyond just can it be manufactured, but uh, addresses things like uh, what's going to be the yield or the reliability of the product or the cost to produce the product. Mm -hmm. And so the earlier you can identify those in the design cycle, the better you can take action. Mm -hmm. um, this is what we call a left shift. Right. And this applies to all of our customers regardless of their EDA flow. Mm -hmm. uh, matter of fact, one of my best customers using concurrent DFM uh, does so in an Allegro environment where they run Valor DFM on a daily basis on mm -hmm. every single one of their designs. But what's new with this release of Valor NPI that we're announcing here at the show is we now have embedded DFM in the expedition flow from Mentor. Okay. So the expedition customers are going to be able to take advantage of this DFM knowledge while they're all within the expedition environment completely. Mm -hmm. they, the designers never have to run a second application and be familiar with it in order to reap the benefits of the Valor DFM technology. Right. So that makes it uh, easier. It facilitates the designers running DFM concurrent with the layout so they get the maximum benefit by doing so. Right. And, and so it, it sounds to me like you're expanding uh, the Valor MPI so that it's not just a a typical DFM tool, it's becoming a, it's becoming a lot more than that. Correct. Uh, we're all familiar with the process we identify as Lean NPI, mm -hmm. and that's the most efficient, from both cost and time perspective, of getting new products introduced to the marketplace. Mm -hmm. And the Lean NPI process doesn't just stop at the design stage, it extends into manufacturing. It's only when you release the product to the market that you've actually completed the Lean NPI process. Mm -hmm. So what we've done is expanded the Valor solutions beyond just DFM as positioning it to help the customers maximize um, the efficiency of that Lean NPI flow. Mm -hmm. um, we now have capabilities within our offering to where the design organizations can prepare the data for manufacturing in an optimized way and then release it mm -hmm. from the Valor tool set to their suppliers, both fabrication and assembly. Mm -hmm. And that extended flow is something we've been building on for a couple versions now. Our previous uh, version was uh, introducing assembly panel design within our tool set. Mm -hmm. Because many design tools don't have good panelization tools for creating the assembly mm -hmm. panel that the right. fabricator needs to do their fabrication right. panelization from. Right. So we started that with the last version. The current version has now what we call product modeling in it. Mm -hmm. And it allows customers to uh, deliver and add content to the deliverable, the data set going to their suppliers, mm -hmm. so that they can eliminate things like drawings. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the things we all know is you send data to the suppliers, but then you also send documentation mm -hmm. and a variety of files on top of that. If there's a conflict between the data and the documentation, the suppliers don't know what to do with it. Some of them will make a best guess and act on it. Mm -hmm. Some will put the job on hold and ask right. for clarification. Sure. If they pick the wrong source to build from, it's problematic. Right. So now with this latest version, we've got the ability to provide content that eliminates the entire need for drawing sets completely. Mm -hmm. And that's the deliverable that goes to our suppliers. Right. I've noticed you all talk a lot about intelligent data. Right. And you know, we've heard that a lot, you know, and there's been a lot of talk about data formats for a as long as I can remember. Yeah. You know, why, why do you guys think it's so important to move beyond Gerber, which you know, everybody uses it, people don't like it, but they're kind of used to it. So why yeah. do you think it's so important to get past Gerber? It's an interesting question, Andy, and uh, I've been in the industry like many of us for quite a few years, and um, when you look back at the history of where we came from, 
it's amazing uh, how long we've held on to something that really is not efficient. Mm -hmm. uh, I'll pose a question to you now. <laughs> do, do you know when Gerber format was first introduced? It was, a, it was 30 years ago, something. It was many decades ago. <laughs> many sure. decades is yeah. correct. Yeah. This is actually the 50th anniversary of the introduction of Gerber format. As a machine language, yep, originally. 1964. Yeah. And right. I would challenge anybody to name a data format in any application, any industry, that they've held on to for 50 years. Mm -hmm. But for some reason, our industry <laughs> wants to, and we have. It's not necessary. And there's alternatives out there today for intelligent format, mm -hmm. that'd be plus plus being the most preve prevalent one mm -hmm. that allows customers to send the entire data set with sure. intelligence to the suppliers so that the whole uh, supply chain can operate efficiently and accurately. Well, it's, it is very entrenched, but uh, it sounds like you all uh, have a plan forward here. So, uh, And to build on it more from yeah. there. It's a, a format that we feel has uh, served the industry yeah. well with ODB++. Uh, we've uh, introduced version 8 of ODB++ last year at the show, and this year we're announcing the application support for ODB++ version 8. Uh, the ODB++ Solutions Alliance portal that we've set up mm -hmm. has been extremely popular and successful. Many, many software tools have been involved in participating as partners in that ODB++ Solutions Alliance. All right. Well, thanks for coming by and talking to us this morning. Sure thing, Appreciate Andy. it. Thanks we'll for talk me. to you again. Okay. All right. Again, I've been speaking with Pat McGough. I'm Andy Shaughnessy for Real Time with IPC. Thanks for watching.